I'm here primarily to introduce my friend and comrade uh, Valentino, and um, and uh, uh, talk about a little bit about his school um, that he built in South Sudan. Uh, I'm listed as co-founder of the Valentino Ashak Deng Foundation. I can't take much credit at all, and I really want to talk about um, my own uh, personal journey uh, through humility uh, in terms of realizing how little I know and, and how much I need to uh, back away and support Valentino and his staff and uh, educators on the ground. Um, when we, uh, when, when uh, the book What is the What was published, Valentino and I sat down and we talked about what we would do with the proceeds from the book. And immediately Valentino knew he wanted to give back to his hometown of Mario Bayad. had been uh, devastated by 20 years of war. And uh, we had visited in 2003. And Valentino was incredibly moved by what he saw and, and uh, the suffering that had his, uh, his uh, family and, and, and relatives and the rest of the people in the town had endured. And he wanted to uh, create positive change there. So we decided to open a school. And um, after much consultation with the local um, uh, community, he decided it would be a secondary school with a teacher's training college attached. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be supportive. I'm going to do whatever I can. So the first thing I thought is, okay, I'll arrange a meeting with architects in the U.S. We had a meeting with a couple of very fancy architects in San Francisco who were very well-meaning, and they looked at Google Maps and they did some uh, web research about the terrain and. Uh, and the climate, and they put some absolutely beautiful plans together uh, for uh, a school campus in Mario Bay. And uh, we brought these plans to Mario Bay, and of course, uh, they didn't have a, low, a lot of use uh, once we got there. The materials weren't available, and when they were, they weren't affordable. And, uh, and most of the building techniques that were uh, elucidated in the plans couldn't be executed by the workers on the ground. So Valentino started over with a local builder named Lake Majak. And they built the entire school without drawings, without any arch fancy architectural plans created in the US. And they did so in six months. So that was lesson one for me and my journey through humility. Um, the school opened in 2009. It grew from a, fil a few buildings serving 85 students to a campus now of 16 buildings serving 350. So after it opened and was up and running, I still thought, OK, I can be useful. So the next time I came down to Mario Bay, they were building the library. And so I said, well, I know something about books and libraries. I'm going to design all the bookshelves and everything in the library. Drew some nice sketches with some wooden bookshelves that were built into the walls of the, uh, of the building. And of course, Valentino and his builders said, well, you, we can't do this at all. The termites will eat the shelves within a week, and then they'll eat the, the books. And, um, so then I backed away, and they did it their way, of course, in a much better way. The third time I was there, I said, OK, I'm going to back up even more. The one thing I know is that uh, for Western visitors to the school campus, what we could use is a Western-style toilet. So I thought, this is one thing I can do. So I designed a little toilet, which was basically looked like a chimney with a uh, toilet seat on the, on, on the, on the top. And uh, I designed it, and I left. And the next time I came back, it was built. And I said, finally, I achieved something. I made myself useful. And I said, has anyone been using the toilet? And they said, well, not exactly. And I said, uh, why, why would that be? It looks good. And they said, well, it's, the main problem is uh, the bats. And um, it turns out that the toilet had become home to a family of about 30 bats that were, uh, had taken up residence on the underside of the toilet seat. And it was not useful to humans unless they were very brave. So I learned that uh, I am not so useful as an architect, even an architect of toilets. <clears throat> I am most useful as a supporter, fundraiser, and cheerleader for Valentino, his staff, and faculty on the ground. They know what they're doing. Small projects like Valentino's are one of the key ways the new nation of South Sudan will move forward. Small projects like his are nimble, adaptable, and they can have immediate impact, and they need support. There are thousands of other young men and women of the so-called lost boys and girls generation, and an astoundingly large percentage of them are trying to improve conditions in South Sudan. These young men and women were educated in the US and Canada and Australia and are now spearheading progress in their new nation. These projects, though, because of their small size, often go unnoticed and unfunded, even though they are the most likely to have immediate impact and be able to adapt quickly to changing conditions in the new nation of South Sudan. So I urge you to, uh, 
to, uh, to look at these projects, to uh, support them if you can. And I urge you to listen to a visionary and one of the leaders of this generation and my friend, Valentino Deng. Thank you, Dave, and uh, thank you, Rist. And I also would like to express my gratitude and honest ap appreciation to many of the CGI members in this room. I'm honored to be with you again this year and look forward to another opportunity next year. Uh, last year, I gave uh, a progress report about my 2007 commitment. Uh, increasing access to secondary school education in southern Sudan. Uh, when I made that commitment, we had nothing to begin with. We only had hoped and trust in humanity. And also I was uh, confident that uh, with the network I have, uh, nothing would be impossible to create in a remote place such as Southern Sudan at the time. Uh, today, uh, South Sudan is uh, uh, a newly independent country, and uh, we are very hopeful for the future of this brand new country. Mm. But there are many challenges ahead, and one of the greatest challenges is girls' education, or creating or increasing uh, access to quality education, to girls, to girls' quality education is one of my challenges. Mm. Southern Sudan have one uh, is one of the lowest, uh, has one of the lowest literacy rates in the world, and it is estimated that 92 percent of women are illiterate in that region. Less than 20% of girls attend high school, and only 1% attend secondary school. Even when girls do reach secondary school, some traditional practices lead to a very low, a very high school dropout. And these conditions included things such as girls being responsible for many of the household duty, duties in their room. Uh, one example I would tell you is that some of my girl students <coughs> come to school in the morning and then go home to help fetch water for birth and for cooking, to help look after their younger siblings, to help pound grain and make food for eight or 12 member family. And it is the same girls that would help clean utensils in the evening and go to bed late. That is a high school student who will have to wake up in the morning, make tea for the whole family, and go to school. They hardly have time to study. And because of that, we have decided to create a conducive learning environment for girls like that by building dormitories and enrolling them as boarding students. By so doing, we help to create time for them to study and small communities in the school where they socialize and learn about uh, uh, certain leadership qualities. We give them one month, after one month vacation after every three months to go back and help and live with their families. We now have uh, over uh, 60 girls in our secondary school, and it is the highest girls' enrollment in most of the country. <clears throat> we, also, uh, we have also developed leadership programs that include students' governments, uh, debating clubs, social action teams, girl guides, and boy scouts. And uh, we have done this, you know, to help build confidence and to grow uh, a strong network of support among the student body and their communities. Our foundation intends to increase the nationwide enrollment this year 
and we will do so only by enrolling girl students from different parts of the country and bring them to this school. We still have many challenges to go to, and that is even maintaining these girls at school, because we cannot charge school fees. If we do so, maybe a few boys will get a scholarship from their families. Many of the girls will not have that support because they would rather be married off than, uh, than, uh, than being supported to go to school. Uh, that is one of my challenges, you know, if we are to tackle girls' education in a country like South Sudan, one has to think about providing scholarships to these girls and creating a, a conducive landing environment where they will stay or you charge school fees and risk having all the girls drop out. In 2007, I made that commitment with bare hands. And now we are uh, proud to inform you again that uh, we have enrolled 350 students in our school. And we still have uh, a long way to go, but we are committed to actually replicate this is school programs in different part of the country, uh, given uh, the support and the, the network that we might be able to access through uh, gathering like the Clinton Global Initiatives. Mm. I also would like to inform you that uh, I am deeply honored that uh, the High Commissioner for Refugees is here. <laughs> I, have, I grew up in the camp and had worked as a social worker and and it happened that while we got our independence in July 9th, another conflict started in northern Sudan that had displaced uh, thousands of, uh, of uh, Sudanese from that part of the country, and they are now back in South Sudan. So I'm wondering, as a former refugee, uh, what to do. You know, when I stop being a refugee, there are refugees in my backyard. And, uh, I also would like to raise some attention that since the High Commissioner is here, he's doing one of the most complicated jobs, and that is supporting refugees from different parts of the world. I am going to commit myself into helping the UNHCR uh, advocates all over the world. If there is anything I can do, High Commission, I commit myself to that. Thank you.